Logic Pro for iPad comes packed with so many brilliant stock plugins that you might never need to visit the App Store ever again. Not all of them are created equal, however, so in this video, I'm going to share five stock plugins that you should definitely be using in your Logic Pro for iPad projects. Kicking us off is one of the few stock plugins whose desktop user interface survived the transition over to iPad. Chromaverb. Chromaverb is unique in that it gives a visual representation of what the plugin is actually doing to the track you have it applied to. Presentation aside, Chromaverb is incredibly flexible and works brilliantly well in a variety of different circumstances. You can use it to add some subtle colour to a drum track add body to a synth track add long dreamy tails to a guitar track send any audio into outer space. <laughs> Preset surfers have loads of different categories to get their teeth into. And if you'd rather get your hands dirty and dial in your reverb sound yourself, Chromaverb has a really robust set of controls. You can set things like room type, multiple EQ controls, widen the effect, and loads more. This is as deep a reverb plugin as you'll find anywhere and puts a lot of premium reverb apps to shame. Those curious whether Logic Pro for iPad will work as a way to master their music may have already taken a peek at the output channel for the included demo project, Take A Day Trip's Manzana. Surprisingly, the only plugin loaded on Manzana's output track is the Adaptive Limiter. What does it do? Well, as Apple describe it, it works by rounding and smoothing peaks in the signal, producing an effect similar to an analogue amplifier being driven hard. Like an amplifier, it can slightly colour the sound of the signal. You can use the adaptive limiter to achieve maximum gain without introducing unwanted distortion and clipping, which can occur when the signal exceeds 0 dBFS. That means that Logic's Adaptive Limiter is a great way to bring your project up to broadcast volume, ensuring that it doesn't sound out of place when played alongside other tracks in a playlist, for example. Control-wise, things are pretty straightforward, with inputs, reduction and output meters here, gain and out ceiling, which sets the maximum output level, controls, TP detection and remove DC button, which is handy if you have unwittingly captured any nasty electrical signals while recording. There are look ahead controls here as well, plus a selection of presets if you'd rather just set it and forget it. Breaker is a plugin that reorders audio in real time, allowing you to slice up your audio, rearrange it, and add things like scratching effects. 
could do some really weird things with Beat Breaker, but I found it to be especially useful for adding stutter type effects to melodies and drum patterns. It's really easy to get to grips with and really fun to use too. There are loads of presets you can dive into to get a feel for what the plugin can do. Though it's probably more fun to adjust things by hand. There are three different types of effects or edit modes here. Time, repeat and volume. You can select an effect using the edit mode buttons. When selected, each mode appears as a colour. Time mode is orange, repeat mode is magenta, and volume mode is yellow. When you select an edit mode and tap a slice, the parameters for the selected slice are visible at the top of the main editor. You can adjust the parameter level using a gesture, or directly drag the parameter value sliders. When you use gestures on the slices in time mode, a mapping line indicates which instant in the input buffer will play back in the output pattern, allowing you to select how to chop your audio and change its speed. You can use repeat mode to add up to 8 repetitions of the selected slice to create some pretty incredible stutter effects. With volume mode, you can change the volume over the duration of a slice to create swells and changes in dynamics. You can utterly transform things like synth sounds or chop up and re-put back together drum loops with Beat Breaker. It's really impressive and really great fun to use. Yeah, I know what you're thinking, a compressor. Woohoo. But Logic's stock compressor is actually really powerful and really flexible. While it does give users access to all of the controls you would expect in a pro level compressor, like mono, stereo, and dual mono modes, input output gain control, input output level meters, two large and well-designed compression metering options, gain reduction metering, a built-in limiter, and full sidechain support. Logic Stock Compressor also has seven different built-in models that emulate the sound of several iconic compressors from the history of music production and sound engineering. The default Platinum model is a clean, clinical, super variable option that allows you to highly customise all aspects of the compressor. It's a proper jack of all trades and easy to see why it acts as the default option. The Studio VCA model takes its inspiration from the Focusrite Red series of compressors and acts as a precise, opaque option for those looking for a more subtle compression effect. The Studio FET is based on Universal Audio's 1176LN compressor and aims to replicate that hardware's famous warmth. This model's character fits really well with vocals and live instruments in particular. The classic VCA is based on popular 70s compressor, the DBX160VU. More straightforward than some of the other available models, the classic VCA sounds great on more rocky vocal and drum tracks. The Vintage VCA is based on the hardware version found in the Solid State Logic SL4000 mixing desk. This model provides a good balance between modern, precise, and detailed compression and gritty character that makes it a good choice for most track types. The Vintage FET is another take on the Universal Audio 1176 mentioned earlier, but this time a earlier, grittier model. Useful in most of the same situations as the Studio Fit, it's worth trying them both on your dirtier instrument and drum tracks to see which one clicks for you. 
And finally, the Vintage Opto is based on the hugely popular Teletronics LA2A. This compressor is especially good on buses and even on the master bus, as it provides a lot of control while also retaining a lot of tube-like character and warmth. <laughs> You'll be hard pushed to find a premium compression app on the App Store that rivals Logic's stock compressor when it comes to flexibility and sound quality. Sample Alchemy lets you quickly resynthesize a bit of audio and turn it into a weird and wonderful playable instrument. It provides a variety of synthesis techniques, such as granular, additive and spectral, which can be combined to create a wide range of sounds. The five flexible play modes offer different ways to play back a sample and interact with it. From classic mode, which lets you play the sample from start to finish, Gotta keep it in dry. to loop mode, where you place the handles on the waveform to create up to two snippets of looped audio. In addition, scrub mode lets you move the handles across the waveform to trigger it as if scrubbing through tape. And bow mode replicates the bow action used to play stringed instruments. Finally, ARP or arpeggiator mode can generate repeating patterns of notes that cycle through different sections of the sample creating intricate sequences based on MIDI notes. It's a brilliant way to take an otherwise straightforward clip of audio and mangle it and twist it into something almost unrecognisable. Fantastic fun and a great way to get your hands on some unique sounds. Those are the stock plugins that you should be using in your Logic Pro for iPad projects. Let me know your favourite stock plugins down in the comments, and if you could give that like button a good slap on the way past, I'd really appreciate it. And somewhere up here, you should be seeing another lovely Logic Pro for iPad video, so give it a click if you want to keep on watching.